Hey everyone, welcome back for another episode of Off-Road Hub in Ken's Crazy Customs two-car garage. I'm going to be doing a couple different things today, but I'm going to start out with uh, an oil filter relocation. I've briefly explained this before, but I'll go over it again in case you missed it. So this is the factory oil filter housing that comes on uh, Toyota FJ Cruisers 2010 and forward. It also appears on other Toyota SUVs and pickups like the Tacoma uh, with the 4 liter V6 um, from that same era. Now this design is all well and good unless you decide to do a solid axle swap. So I pushed the Dana 60 back just so that I can get in there to do this. So the problem here is that this axle is going to be up here and it's going to want to move up and down. Here's the engine right here. And then this oil filter is bolted on to the front bottom of the engine. And so, so you can see how much that hangs down. That is right in the way of your axle and your steering if you're doing a silent axle swap. So what needs to happen is that the oil filter housing needs to be relocated. Now, there are kits out there to relocate the oil filter um, and then what that does is just screws an adapter into the bottom of this housing right here. But that's not going to work for me because I need that whole housing to be totally out, out of there, totally out of the way. So what I have is this super simple adapter that's going to allow uh, lines to run off of the front of the engine. So it's going to bolt on like that. And then lines can come off of that and go to a remote oil filter location. So I did not make this myself, but I had a local shop do it for me. Uh, so you can't just order this from, from somebody online, but you could have a local shop do it for you um, if you're not into aluminum fabrication. So this is just a half inch piece of aluminum that it's cut out of. And then up front here are some uh, AN 10 fittings and then I, I had these this length put on here because I'm gonna have two 90 degree fittings put on here that are gonna both gonna point off in one direction and so I changed the height of this so that they don't hit each other and then these pipes are just and these fittings are just TIG welded TIG welded onto the aluminum so that's about it pretty simple but uh, it should get the job done and it will use the factory um, dual layer metal gasket so you can just use the factory gasket that you can get from the dealership this is the old one I have a new one that'll go on here but that makes it really simple and here's what my oil filter adapter looks like it's from Baxter performance um, that's just what it looks like you screw on an oil filter and it's inverted so the oil filter sits upright it's got uh, inlets on the bottom and on the side so whichever work best for your application and it's got plugs for the holes you don't use and it's got a mounting plate it's all aluminum so that's basically what it little what it will look like so i've got to deal with underhood real estate I've got my air compressor over here, my batteries over here, I've got a washer fluid tank over here, and I've got empty space back here in the corner. Of course, my oil filter outlet is going to be down here on this corner of the engine on the bottom, so I don't want to be over there with the oil filter. That wouldn't be very good, because I'd have to run long lines with lots of bends and stuff to get over there. So what I've decided to do is take my battery and put it over there so i've got a a new battery tray coming from c4 fabrication um, that is actually made to fit up in this corner uh, and so that's what i'm going to do i'll put my oil filter right here so i've got nice easy uh a run of lines to come up to it and one of the other reasons I want to move the battery is uh, in addition to wanting to put the oil filter here 
is that I'm probably gonna have to trim some metal down here in the wheel well for tire clearance and the battery is right here so if I get the battery out of there I'll be able to have some room to play with clearance down here in the wheel well and as you can see I've kind of made a or created a mess of wires over here uh, just adding things over time so this will give me a chance to clean things up and uh, run all my wiring nice and clean over new to the new battery location so I've got to make a bracket to hang my oil filter from over here and since I'm gonna replace this dented up fender anyway I might as well completely remove it so I can easily bolt a bracket to the body right here. That gives me lots and lots of uh, uh, ease of access. It's amazing when you start removing body panels and things like that, how much just garbage is stored in the body, leaves and dirt. All that dirt came out of this uh, fender when I pulled it off. It was all being stored right down here. So, huh. man, if your FJ or whatever vehicle's ever been off-road, there's probably dirt that's been in there for years that you don't even realize is there. oil filter housing bracket complete I would say that it's pretty fair dinkum now we'll just get this thing bolted in well first I actually need to get my housing bolted to the bracket and then I'll bolt it into the FJ there we go now it's ready to bolt into the engine bay actually I take that back I'm gonna put in the plugs and the fittings so it comes with uh, four different holes for different choices there's in and out labeled uh, for oil in, oil out. Uh, so you can put the fittings in the bottom or the side, and then the side, you, the part you didn't put the fittings in, they give you some plugs that you can put in here so that uh, it doesn't spray oil, oil everywhere. Okay, now that my fittings and plugs are installed, now I'm gonna put it in the vehicle. And there you have it. Uh, like I said before, all these wires will be gone, getting out of the way after I relocate the battery over on the other side. So over here we've got our, our nuts and bolts coming through. And uh, now our oil filter is just a screw on oil filter. Look at that, right there. Easy, easy to get to. So. My lines are going to come off of here and go straight down to here where I will now bolt on my uh, new outlet fittings. So there it is, bolted in. Uh, like I said, there's going to be two 90 degree AN10 fittings that come off of here and then lines that go up to my oil filter housing. So I just ran some bulk hose uh, from the filter down to the connection on the engine to get my length, um, just, to, just to get length, and uh, it turned out to be 38 inches. 
So now I will have some uh, braided steel reinforced line made up with my AN connections and everything. Um, that'll probably take two or three days to get. So, but I'll get that in process. But uh, you get the idea basically of the, the filter being up here and my connections and just running down there. It's pretty simple and straightforward. And what a great location for the oil filter. All right, well, now that the oil filter situation is sorted out, I am going to address something else in the back that I'm not totally satisfied with, and that is this panhard axle mount. I don't like it. I don't like the angle. I just, uh, I'm not comfortable with it. So I'm gonna do something totally different with it. Okay, here's my four inch channel, which I painted with some uh, uh, steel it on the inside. And that's gonna go on the truss. And then uh, this goes right about here. Can you see where I'm going with this? All right guys, I don't know. Maybe I'm a little off my rocker with this one, but I don't really think so. Um, maybe it's not the most aesthetically pleasing uh, panhard bracket ever, but it's going to be highly functional. I mean, that's super strong, and it's going to connect to the uh, truss, and I'll reinforce it plenty, so strength's not an issue. It's going to put my panhard bar in a great position, so... It might be crazy, but I know that it'll work, so, eh. So there it is. I think um, after I get this welded in nicely and do a little bit of reinforcement, it's going to be super awesome. I think it's a way better setup than the bracket that was in there, and there's not really a bracket made for it, so I don't really, I don't really see how I could do any better than that. I like it. All right, guys. Well, thanks for joining me on this one, and thanks for coming along on this uh, long journey of a one-ton solid axle swap on my FJ Cruiser. Uh, I really appreciate you watching. Check me out on Instagram, and also come join me on Facebook on my new Facebook group called Off-Road Hub. Um, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up, and if you haven't already, subscribe so I can share new content with you every Monday and Thursday, and we'll see you next time, guys.